Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Ola Olaleye. I'm your host for What Zone. And if you're joining us for the very first time, you're welcome. This is where I showcase Christians who are doing extraordinary things outside of the four walls of the, of the church. And today I have with me a friend and a brother, Taiwo Adekwoju, the startup specialist. He's going to tell us a lot about this. This is posh, posh title. <laughs> He's going to tell us a lot about it and um, we will have fun today, I promise. Most importantly, I want you to get a pen and a paper because this guy you're seeing here is very loaded. So we'll be dropping tips and things you can do how you can get from where you are to where you want to be. It's a journey that we are all on. And um, I believe tonight is going to be an, a night of impact. Before I go any further, before I let um, Ty will speak, I want you to click on that subscribe button if you've not done so. Because every week I bring different people who are doing amazing things outside of the four walls of the church. And what they come to do, the mission, is to inspire you to be all that God has created you to be. So let me start with my guest tonight, Ty World. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you for saying yes, first of all. Thank you for uh -huh. saying yes. I'm glad you said yes. It, and it, there was no protocol to it, you know. Mm. I just sent you that message and you said, why not? Let's do it. Thank you so much. And you, I would you. want you to introduce yourself to my guest. Who is Taiwo Adekonjo? Wow. <laughs> Thank you, first of all. Uh, Ola, <laughs> you know, this for me is not um, a likely invitation. I believe that somehow by the sovereign summons of God, you beckoned on me. And who am I to refuse when it comes to his assignment. Uh, so I must say thank you without any apologies. You know, thank you and sincerely say thank you. Okay, so yes, that's a big question, you know, and honestly, when people ask that kind of question, it's almost like I'm facing a panel. So, but I'll try try to try and cap it just so that it doesn't also become arrogant, you know. Um, so, Taiwo Adipoju, yeah, I'm a twin uh, and I'm, I'm I'm in that space where I'm constantly evolving, constantly evolving. And when I say I'm constantly evolving, it's almost likened to, you know, scripture that, you know, we are shining light, we are shining brighter and brighter and almost like the perfection of the saints. So mm. I'm sure by the time you are listening to this, Tyro must have morphed <laughs> uh, into something. But at this present state, uh, I'm called the startup specialist. And why the startup specialist? I realized that over time, spanning over 20 years, all right, two decades, I've helped people start. And, you know, one of the greatest problems I've experienced with people and also even with myself is the fact that there's that fear. There's a palpable fear when it comes to start or starting. And, uh, well, maybe for Africa and indeed Africans, uh, we've been told to be shy. Uh, we, we've been cautioned also even by negative programming. And so... I help people to start their journeys by setting what I call wildly important goals along the lines personally uh, for profit mm. and for purpose. Okay, mm. so uh, that that's Taiwo in a nutshell. I, I don't know how you want me to, you know, whether you want me to keep talking, but yeah, but I think that uh, expouses who Taiwo is, living his purpose uh, in tandem with helping people also as a reference reference in Africa for the advancement of the kingdom business in three specific areas, entrepreneurship, uh, social impact, and mm. also personal development. I'm married. I have three lovely children. Uh, and yes, I'm not a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow, okay. wow. That was so good. Thank you. Thank you. That's so loaded. That is so loaded. Mm -hmm. You're one person who is living your purpose and you're helping others to discover theirs. That is so, so good. Thank you so much. And I know you mentioned that you're a twin. So I know that this old Taiwo, the startup specialist, did not start from the womb. Mm. 
Mm, started mm. somewhere. I'm very big. I, I am. I, I take people on the journey of discovering who they are in Christ and mm. who they are. And um, what what I also do is I help people discover themselves and not just leave them at the discovery stage. I help mm. them to embrace their uniqueness. What makes them unique? You embrace it and you own it. So that's my role as the um, authenticity coach. And every time I bring people here, I'm always interested in knowing their self-discovery journey. Mm. People admire you. And they, honestly, guys, go and follow Taiwo on Instagram. Oh, my mm. God. It makes my day. You know, <laughs> there was one dance. I was like, oh, yes, brother. I think you, I need to give you some dancing lessons. Oh, yeah, okay, you're yeah, okay. You're trying your best. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so we want to know about your self-discovery journey. How did it all start for you? I, I've read, mm. I read a post that you wrote mm. on your mom, and I was like, mm. wow, this is amazing. Mm. So could you just let us into that journey of the, I know that self-discovery, like you said, you're always evolving. So mm. you can't have one self-discovery story, but mm. the the many or the one that strikes you that you want to share with us, know that we have 54 minutes, so you have time. If you uh -huh. want to tell us, come on, go for it, go for it. Thank you okay. so much. All right. Okay. So, um, uh, and thank you once again, you know, ultimately, um, I would liken my journey. Mm. I would liken this journey and this journey is still on to that yeah. of almost the metamorphosis process. Mm. Okay. Um, so you start off, you know, starting off, uh, you lack clarity, you lack direction, you lack purpose. Okay. Um, and then you are brought into a system you know, not by your choice, that's by bet, okay? Mm -hmm. And I was raised by a single parent, all right, a mom uh, that was, a, at that point, a career woman, highly focused, uh, and somehow, maybe for whatever reason, she didn't get it right when it came to um, having a successful marriage. And it probably also could have been as a result of those times, uh, as to uh, not availing women the opportunity to attain their fullest potential. Uh, so she she defied the odds, you know. I was schooled in England, a princess. Uh, she came back home, first started in the oil and gas sector. Uh, and they said, no, I'm more bad as in the Yoruba palace. A princess does not wear trousers. Okay, she eventually moved from the oil and gas sector into a more, pre uh, you know, royal, you know, ca uh, career. And then she started off into banking. So, yeah, she was always there you know, doing the things. And for a while, I never knew that there was a difference between having a mom and a dad because she stood in, in that gap. So I was influenced strongly by her. Uh, and that also had a, a positive and a negative Im impact on me. Um, and I'll get to that. And also, I, I yes, like you said, I'm not in the womb. I've always been um, given a custodian, you know, as a twin. So I'm always in the council of women, either as a mother or as a, a brother or even as a son. And so I had my twin, my twin, somewhat subtle, gentle, you know, easy going about life. So I had the best of both worlds. I had a Margaret Thatcher, you know, for those that know that iron lady. And then I had uh, a very gentle, angelic, uh, compassionate sister. And that framed a couple of things in my mind. Um, so first, at the point when I needed to get a wife, uh, if you were not measuring up, if I did not see you as hard, strong road, purpose driven, it was probably a minus. Uh, second, it was the fact that uh, I felt that any other person that operated on that level lower than that needed to be availed help. Uh, for whatever reasons, I lacked direction, I lacked clarity. So, like that butterfly, I'd went, gone, I started about life, you know, from the egg stage. I got into the lava and the caterpillar. I started to eat everything that came my way, irrespective of you know what was important. And when I say eat my way, so I, I had a way around women. Uh, women would always flock around me. So yes, I probably would cajole girls of easy virtue, move on on that journey, all through school. Uh, and then somewhere along in the University of Ibadan, I came in contact with uh, God, you know, ultimately having you know, gotten into some business, and I failed. When I say I failed woefully, uh, and at that point, a lot of people probably wouldn't have understood 
you're a student. Shouldn't you have been uh, <laughs> facing your studies? I, I, you know, for me, it was almost like I'd not discovered my strengths. Now, mm -hmm. I, I have to say I'm a Carlos certified strength coach. Uh, mm -hmm. I only discovered my strengths fully, you know, as in, in black and white, only just uh, a few less than eight years ago. But before then, I had this restless spirit, but I did not know how to channel the energy. So it was all about creating, creativity and all of that. Now, you know, it, what was ideal at that point was you must get into a career. Uh, you must get to work. Uh, you must, you know, it was, it was seen as uh, a failure to want to veer into business at that point. You know, it, we, the people that got into business were probably drop out. Uh, so it wasn't fashionable. But yeah, there I was in school, still doing all, all of that. Anyway, uh, I got into some business transactions in school, doing a rave, and uh, I got indebted. Coincidentally, uh, it, that, that, that debt led me, well, the debt was such that it was to the head of, um, I think, one of the cult groups in school, and I didn't know. And so <laughs> that was from five, five pounds to five. Uh, and, you know, when all hope is lost, uh, when there's no way to go, when there's no <laughs> one to share your story and your sorrows with, uh, you, must find, you must just find a way. And that day, I ended up in the uh, Living Faith Church somewhere in the Baron. That's University of Baron uh, in that year, 1998. And, uh, you know, <laughs> when your back, you're almost like that song, when your back is against the wall. Against the wall. <laughs> and it seems as if it was over, over you. Oh, yes. You made made away. Away. <laughs> Hallelujah. And this is not church anyway. So in church, I, there, there was the altar call. And, you know, in that altar call, I was charged, you know, you know, in my spirit. And I, for the first time, I rose up in that, uh, in, in, in that all that day. And I was in tears. Um, first, reason why I was in tears was the fact that I'd never seen, you know, and I never felt that palpable feeling of a connection with a higher being. Forgetting that I'm even hoeing, it was the fact that I just came into myself, you know, almost like the prodigal son. Anyway, fast track, uh, gave my life to Christ. My grades now, another thing I needed to say, and maybe for those, and I don't know why I'm sharing this, maybe for those I also need to learn, there's what I call methods and principles. And for a long time, I didn't know about methods and principles. All right, it's okay to understand methods, it's okay to understand principles, you know, but you know what? Don't always lean on the miracles, all right? Yes, there's a miraculous lifestyle, but miracles, you know, miracles are intervention. So God has created order by method and principle. So back in school, that first year, my, my 100 level, because this whole thing happened to 100 level. 100 level, I, you know, I got into school on merit. And, you know, as a good student, I think that got, got me carried away. Arrogance, you know, arrogance at the highest level. Uh, 241, when the highest in the Federation, I think, I think 271. So I felt that going to school was just going to go and read, you know, and that's also the wrong and negative programming that we had back in those days where people are saying, hey, uh, you must study, you know, memorize and pass exams. Mm. Anyway, Lola, it will shock you to know that uh, my first year in university was crazy. When I say crazy, I lost all the, you know, every, every, every toga of pride dropped because my grades dropped. You know, first of all, I didn't understand how and the system, the method and the principle of the, the higher institution in University of Ibado. I felt just go for the exam and you get it right. I didn't understand that there was the handouts to be purchased. I didn't understand there were tests to be done. I didn't understand there were notes to be submitted. I didn't, so, but I just felt because, you know, I'd gotten, I, I got to school of Mary. Hey, what, what are we talking about? You guys should give me a break. I shouldn't be going to class every day. Oh, but oh. I showed it. I from, anyway, all of that coupled together by 200 level when I gave my life to Christ in that year, 8th of August 1998, there was almost like a shift. And everything I couldn't do then was almost like God just intervened. And somehow that began a journey. But that was the phase one. So from a caterpillar, I got into my, my challenge. Okay. And that point was now becoming a time to start to discover myself. But I didn't discover myself. I only learned to the extent that I was. It was okay for me at that time. One, I did. I was delivered, almost like I had bread. Okay, uh, and then I still was still vacillating between my old and new ways. Okay, so fast track. Got into Abuja after service, 
service beautiful uh, entrepreneur also also working in the bank almost throwing the line of my mom and da 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 and then we went on on that journey but the shocking thing shocking thing was the fact that at some point at some point in my life and i'm moving it faster now so maybe mm -hmm. your questions will come it, it became clear that this wasn't life anymore so i heard some man of god bishop david Oedipo, he said that the old ministry called winners that he built well he had a vision he went on a personal retreat for three days and god unveiled that vision to him so at, at the age of 38 uh, i decided that it was important for me to also go and experience my own encounter so i went rather on the three days because you know he's a man of god and then me i'm still an aspiring aspirant on the man of god ship arena so <laughs> i went i decided to do a seven day if the man of god did three days then let me let me manage and see what seven days will do so in on the fourth day coincidentally i came in contact with that scripture about the guy that had been at the pool of that uh, hmm. remember at that point i was talking about being there for 38, 38 years Wow, so it was, wow. wasn't a coincidence. It wasn't a coincidence. Uh, for whatever it is, I I got into a trance, got into several other insights, but we'll not talk about that today, maybe some other time. And God unveiled certain things. And that mm -hmm. began somewhat my journey. But before that episode, it was that I had entered into another financial embarrassing crisis. That was like something that I lost three board positions, I'd um, closed my office for six months plus, uh, I couldn't pay salaries. I had not dropped allowances for four to five months at home. It was crazy. You know, everything I wanted to sell is that they said they, they couldn't buy something. And one day, uh, we had visitors in the house. And that's what led to this encounter. We had visitors in the house and the, the, the gas finished. Um, that's the cooking gas. And for whatever it is, you know, arrogance also would not allow you to interact with your wife in the way you ought to. Um, so I could even summon the courage to ask her, look, uh, babes, I only have, I don't even have enough money to go and buy gas. With visitors in there, I went out and for the first time ever in that crisis over a period of five to six months, I started to cry again, almost like in 1998, you know. Um, and then I asked God, what have I done wrong? you know Aww. because then then that you know it just couldn't be explained i just cut a deal five seven no seven months before then i cut a deal with a major state government you know and then it was like i came out poorer from that transaction and so i i just said look everything then again i was like all air, all hell let loose and i cried out somehow the gas got filled i got back home and i set up on that journey again like it happened in 1998 and it's been blissful since then. Uh, God set my path. You know, I went on some little, little Bible indoctrination here and there. And voila, uh, I'm still living my best lives now. Because what 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 happened to me is that it didn't happen suddenly. Um, so even also up until the COVID experience, um, which would be a month from now, which would be a month from uh, well, a few days from now when there was a lockdown in Nigeria, mm. I was still... Of vacillating, but I still wasn't living my best life yet. I wasn't living my best life. But it, it took COVID to point me to the fact that, hey, all this junketing up and down everywhere, today London, today I'm, you know, yeah, everywhere. What's happening? And I was just at home, you know, and I was doing my transactions, doing my businesses effortlessly. I was bonding with my family, bonding with my wife, you know, it was sweet. And then somehow it was just clear. That hey, there's also you remember there's more to life than all of this, uh, and then this vision. I haven't had an encounter with um, uh, the master. I call him Feladrote. Yeah. He, he proposed me onto discovering that hey, that's your your gift too. It's about time you started to unleash it. And so wow. after an encounter that evening, uh, God spoke to me. Yes, God spoke to me, and uh, I, I we got the name the Startup Specialist, and the Startup Specialist. It was also morphing because every day there's a new insight as to the role and the mandate to play with that. I, you know, so I hope I haven't bored you with all this love. No, story. no, no. It's it's <laughs> you know, you know the no, no, you know the interesting thing is I know you as a man who loves God. I know yeah. that. Yeah. But you know, sometimes it becomes a cliche in the church, right? Yeah. So 
that person is a man of God. Oh, mm. that person loves God. It's like mm. um, we just drop it around. But for mm. you, every of your statements, even mm. Ruth, Ruth mm. has highlighted it. She said, powerful mm. testimony of having personal encounter with God. Mm. You know, this, this is one of my heart cry that will come to that um, revelation as a mm. body. And I mm. mean the body of Christ, where Absolutely. people can say, God told me, mm. rather than my bishop told me. I mm. know God can speak through your bishop. Yes, but yes. what is God telling you as an individual? Mm. Because every of these things, I'm, 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 I'm amazed. I'm in awe. Because every of your statements is, you know, God, I, I encountered God. I did mm. this with God. And God told me this. I cried out to God. You didn't mm. say, I called my pastor. Mm, yeah. You know, because uh, honestly, I know no disrespect to pastors. I love, mm. in fact, me and my pastor, I, I battle my pastor. Let me use that word. <laughs> if you are not, if you are not um, Yoruba here, that means I honor and respect my pastor, mm -hmm. you know. But, mm -hmm. you know, we, we have come to that, um, um, there's this thing in the church, the kind of Christians that is be, are being raised now, are Christians mm. that if a cockroach walks through their door, they will call their pastor. Mm. Do you understand? And mm. thank God for COVID. COVID has made us sit down. You and your Bible pastor can't come to your house. Mm. Clearly. It's, Clearly. He, he can't come to your house. There's social mm. distancing. Mm -hmm. So you have to sort God for yourself. Sometimes you want to connect. Internet is not working. It's not there. <laughs> yeah, internet is not working. So you can't connect to church. You have to mm -hmm. know God for you. So yes. thank you for saying that. Thank you for sharing that because this is the mm. time for us to know God for ourselves. And one of the other another thing that I got from your you from the things you're talking about, God is interested in the little things, including mm. your gas cooker. Mm, mm, your mm, gas mm, so god mm. is not just interested in the big things mm -hmm, he's interested mm -hmm. in the small he said mm. seek you first the kingdom of god and mm. every other thing every mm. tiny thing the shoelace mm. god is interested in yes. the shoelaces <laughs> i'm telling you he's interested because <laughs> all of these things he wants us he said he has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness Absolutely. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for sharing thank that. Thank, and thank honestly, God. and you said something, I know that you you summarized your story. <laughs> you, you, you really did. You said something about you starting a business mm. and the business folded. Then mm. you started another one. Mm. Mm. So what happened? How come you didn't feel like Oh, I've done that business. I've done something before and it didn't work. <laughs> I've, done, I've done something before. And it, because Absolutely. you, you let, let me say this. I used to have this issue with my husband. I wouldn't like mm. to. Yeah. When my husband wants to do something, especially in Nigeria, I'm like, ah, mm. Nigeria. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling yeah. you. So my husband would say, no, but it's okay. I was, ah, it's okay. <laughs> mm, mm. So I want to, I want you to talk to someone who is listening now. Right. I'm in a book club, and one of the things we spoke about is failure is an event, it's not mm. you. Yeah. So I want you to please dwell on that. Let us pieces that that okay. I tried this business before, it didn't work. Mm. I decided mm. to try another business, mm. or even if it's the same business, but you decided to try again. Okay. Why did you try? Why did you give it a go again? Why? Okay, so um, uh, maybe maybe I needed to reintroduce myself. Right? Mm. So if I needed to introduce myself, I've been, I'm the failure specialist. You know, as in I failed so well that there's nothing else to do again but to succeed. <laughs> <laughs> say that again, say that again, say that again. <laughs> you know, this journey of discovery and also it's also saying, look, you felt well in that field that they've given you a certificate that's okay, okay, leave there now. You can't be failing again. No, you can do that and succeed. And that's why I'm on that Graduate from failing. <laughs> yes, I've been graduate, I've graduated from failure. 
all right, from that school of failing to the point where I'm mm. beginning to live a life of success. And also, this is also mm. a bit spiritual. So, before I go into that, your question, eh, and that's mm. your, you know, you want an explanation, I'll tell you. But, you see, sometimes also, eh, we, we, are, we are spiritual, all right, we are spiritual beings, you know, we are, you know, so we must come to the point where we cannot also always pride in the things that everybody is able to do outside mm. of God. Oh. We cannot. So yeah. if if people are succeeding in business, it's, it, as a Christian, it's also to su succeed in business. But business, like I said, methods and principles. Mm. You know, so back in the days, they were teaching us, eight o'clock is the time for school. Never be late in the... They were preparing us for work. Mm. They were preparing us for methods as, and principles. Okay? Mm. Now, all of a sudden, Christians wake up to that understanding that they want miracles. All right? But miracles are interventions. All right? God provides interventions when it's necessary. So you could mm. have an instance around when there was the extension of a day or an intervention when it came to, you know, getting the rain. Or a prophet decides that he's angry with his people and let two bears consume the children. No, but those are interventions that, but God is a God of order. Okay, mm. so he still wants us to operate from that point where we have order, all right? And with order, there are methods and there are principles. The guy that knows the methods, all right, uh, will always have a job. But the guy that knows the principles and why will always be the boss. And I'm going mm. to say that again. The guy wow. that knows the methods will always... Will Put always it down for me, somebody. <laughs> will always have, you know, a job. But to the guy that knows why, will always be the boss. the boss. And there are several methods, you know, but there are principles that are infallible. Now, now, let, let, why I've said this background is also into that scripture that says the labor of fools worries mm, them worries because them. they do not know how to get into the city. So there's the knowing how to do certain things. And so somehow they want to meet authenticity coach now. The know-how. She has experienced the know-how. So that's why you need a coach, all right? Even God, Jesus, had his coach. Coaches, mm. in fact, there were 12 disciples, all right? Mm. But we're not talking about that today. Yeah. <laughs> so why do you say that there's this failure of starting? Let me tell you something. Failure has been stigmatized, almost like mm. when you hear someone has HIV, or you hear mm. someone is a racist, or you hear someone has a, a, a rare disease, or even a leper, okay? But you see, God has designed us originally to be fearless, all right, to be curious and to be restless. Mm. I'm going to say that again. God has designed, designed us to be fearless, okay? Mm. So as children, you are born fearless. The mm. child can touch anything, but parents teach the child to fear. As they mm. grow up, colleagues, friends, associates, environment, exposure, education, nurtures us to what? Fear. Yeah. Now, the second thing is that we're curious, all right? Well, so, but curiosity has never killed a cat. But we constantly tell people that curiosity kills the cat. Why do you want to know? So, even in Africa, which is the bane of Africa's development, the need to know is no longer available. So, when someone sees chicken, and instead of inquiring that, why is this chicken flying, and uh, why is it not able to fly up like an eagle? They tell him, shut up, but you know everything. And then the child releases his energy to eating chicken pepper soup. So rather than discovering the law of aerodynamics, the child mm. limits his, his, his lack of curiosity wow. into the point where he now only ultimately just begins to think about food, food, food. And he cannot invent, he cannot create. Okay, that's the second. The third one is that we're restless beings. Restless, restless, restless. We're supposed to be going, you know, almost like the spirit of God, to and fro, you know, achieving great exploits, you know. But somehow, we say, ah, as a growing child, don't go see as in for a Yoruba guy, that sit down there. Why are you troubling everybody? Why? Because first, we do not even know how to channel that energy. Okay, having said that basis, it's clear now that somehow, this mm. same fear, people carry on in their life. All right, so they can't even start businesses, they can't start marriages, they can't start careers, they can't start their purpose journey. And in their inability to start is laced in the fear, which is a limiting programming that has been installed over time. Now, this limiting program, 
Look, if you only understand, this thing has estranged people. It has debarred the minds of people from living the best and extraordinary lives that they can live. And that's why we see so much things happening, that even when people go to church, they still have the, the limiting programs, the limiting self-beliefs, self-limiting beliefs installed. And that no matter how many laying on your hands that you put, no matter how many scriptures you accept, they come into an understanding of wanting to know they will probably not be delivered. And people will still be struggling. They will still be striving. They, you know, they will still be crawling and scra crawling. Now, so I tell people, I say, look, you must come, and that's what I do as a startup specialist. I help you find clarity to help you begin that journey to start. So the, those things that you had feared before, almost using the methodology of David. You know, David, in confronting the Goliath, talked about, I've conquered the lion, I've conquered the bear. Okay, so that means that there are also little beginnings. There are little steps you must take. You don't yeah. run that uh, I want to do a $1 billion or $1 million journey. You start with an understanding mm. of little steps. Slide yeah. upon life, precept upon precept. So guess what? For you to start, and if I've not gone off, oh, please, I hope I'm not talking too much. I'm for, you to start, for you to start, for you to start, you must have clarity. So with clarity, you have direction. With direction, you can run faster. You have illumination. Now, when people lack any of this, how else? They will fail. You know, so one of the things that we try to do is to say, hey, guy, can we even find out what has been distorting your program? And that's why I call myself a specialist. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a doctor. But when you go to your doctor, the doctor asks for your, your history, your background. He begins to ask for certain questions. And I believe that there are three fold cords that must not be broken. There is the personal atmosphere. There is the profit atmosphere. And there is the purpose atmosphere. You see, when there's an imbalance, there's likely going to be a fraction. You know, and, you know people will just be running outer skelter. They will just see that it's not connected. And look, I'm here to hear, you know, somebody will say, hey, what about Elon Musk? What about Warren Buffett? I can tell you, a few of these guys also are not living a purposeful life because at some point you soon realize that it's still a journey. It's insatiable. It cannot be, you know, you get to that point where when you play Plato, you would probably also come into that point of depression. So people get every other thing they want. You know, uh, Steve Jobs got every other thing, you know, but he couldn't get back his life. He couldn't. He couldn't get back his life. And a lot of people need to also hear this story because sometimes in an environment where the focus or the fixation is on material gains, materiality, okay, hmm. we, we would have failed ourselves and our journey. Yes, it's okay. He left fantastic product. You know, he left, you know, a legacy at some point, but was it fulfilled? Did it live a fulfilled life? And I'm saying, you know, my best life now eh, is that I can do as God has programmed me to do. I can dance. You know, it says I will dance like David dance. So, hey, you see me dancing eh, as a professional. We, before, the negative programming would have been don't dance. Uh, yeah. Professionals don't dance in public. Mm. Don't sing. Uh -uh. And he's saying sing, oh, ye barren. You know, but, but anyway, so let, let, let me, <laughs> so you cannot be living on a different program or if you're on this journey, you know, you must That's be good. able to follow, follow the manual. There's a manual he has given, it's in his word, and there's a guidance, you know, that gives you illumination as the Holy Spirit, and it will give you insight as to living. If you fail to go on that journey and you're waiting for somebody to interpret, you write the word to you, hey, you will be subject to the person's insight as to yeah. the person's exposure. And that's the yeah. failure. So for everything we are doing also, um, we must at that point know that we are on a journey. Is in tandem with my personal drive as God will have me because he says he knows everything before he has designed us for a purpose. Uh, is in line with my profit and is in line with my purpose journey. When we're able to answer those questions, I'm, I'm sure, you know, you can easily just start off, either in your career, in your business, or in your business, or in every other area of your life. Okay. Wow. That is amazing. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you. Thank you for dropping that. That is so loaded. I have to watch this again, honestly. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is so loaded. Oh, my God. You know, I had, um, I had um, uh, a coaching client on Saturday, and I was playing this... Um, video to her and this mm. woman there was talking about where obviously we're talking about authenticity this is the program i run it's a um, an eight weeks program so Great. we're talking about authenticity and she was talking about 
she as a banker, you mm -hmm. know, when she goes to pitch, her colleagues will want to tell people, oh, she sings well, she has released albums and all that. And she'll go, no, 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 I don't want you to say mm -hmm. that about me because she didn't want them to know that side of her. But I, I'm just saying that to buttress what you're saying as a professional, yes. you can dance, you know. So mm -hmm. she said, but she discovered that whenever they mention that she's a singer, the whole room lights up. Mm. The whole room of professionals lights up. And mm. before the meeting starts, they are coming to her. You know, my daughter used to sing. My daughter wanted to release an album. Then she said she will now start advising them. This one said, mm. Oh, I used to love out I used to love to sing, but sometimes my family would just tell me, sing in the shower, don't sing outside, mm. you know, things mm. like that. Then she said she started taking them through that journey and she discovered that. Even if she came to pitch with 10 other people, mm. that that side of her would always open up Absolutely. the people to her. So she mm. said, look, when you are, you know, we were talking about being authentic. So I use that to demonstrate to my clients that, look, authenticity is you bringing yourself, your professional self, your playful self, mm. bringing all of it together and mm. enjoying you because there's a freedom when you enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. There's Absolutely. a freedom you get when you stand on um, Instagram, when you take that your camera and you're like, you know, you, you know, there's this freedom you enjoy that you don't have to stand in a particular way, you know, oh. as, as <laughs> there's this, there's this mm. freedom. And that's, mm. that's the journey I'm on. I want to help people discover that freedom that, look, you can enjoy your life. It doesn't, mm. it doesn't make you smaller. And I like what you mm. said about failure, mm. that failure cannot define you. Failure is not failure enough to mm. define you. Uh, no, uh, because failure uh, is an event. It's not, uh, it's not, it's not a destination, uh, you know, so it can't define you. Thank you so much, Ty. I'm so <laughs> enjoying this. I'm like, please, if you have any questions for Ty, drop it, drop it, drop it. And make sure you follow him. Follow him on Instagram. No, no, they will find me. God will lead them to. But let me say something. You they know? have to <laughs> find me. <for them. laughs> let me say something. So, you know, I talked about friends like, but let, let me move on first down in bed. You know, so. You, you, you know, I tell people, stay on your lane, okay? Mm. Uh, and, you know, so for ladies, I have 80% of my clients as women. And that's also because I'm, I've also been called. You know, you see, when you don't know your purpose, you know, you will have a space priority. So then I thought that women were easily drawn to me, that I was, that, oh, yeah, I'm a fine boy. Yeah, I'm a fine guy. You know, I speak well. You know, I have what it takes. But, you know, I didn't understand that there was an Ooh. assignment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> So the moment I soon realized that, and God led me to start up a foundation for women called Phenomenal African Woman Foundation. That was also one of the you know consequences of the the retreat I had there. I were in sixteen African countries, and we are touching lives. What are we doing? We are inspiring, celebrating, and empowering women of African descent. But well, let me now tell you something. You see, when I was growing up, they used to call me my mother's uh, anba. They used to call me woman rapper. You know, you see, you see, the world will call you a name. They will label you. But mm. God has a design for you. Now, when I say stay on your lane, you see, most mm. people live their lives, all right, like a fish trying to mm. climb a tree. Mm. Now, you see, look, the original program of a fish is to swim. Mm. But also, the fish must also know its territory, all right? Mm. There's salt water fish. There's the fresh water fish. There's the shallow mm. water. There's all the muddy water fish. You see, the day the fresh water fish believes that because I can swim, uh, let, let me talk about that, is suicidal. And a lot of people will see Ola authenticity coach. They say, no, I want to be like her. In fact, I want to be able to do what she's doing. You mm. are just on your own thing. Stay on your lane. Discover your strengths. Find your strengths. And that's what one of the things we also help people to do. To say, you know what? Can you discover your strength? Because God has laced us equally. You see, when I didn't know my strengths, I, I was operating as, you know, I, I would abuse. You see, this mm. thing we call abuse, eh? when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is the natural display. Yeah. You know, 
can we abuse? And so when we don't even understand how we are, how, how we, who we are, you see, we will be living life recklessly. So, so there's a prodigal son. He came to himself. He had to understand. Ah, it is ought to be more than this. There was hmm. blind particular now. He was moving with you, you know. He came to himself. Say, ah, they say Messiah. Okay, son of David, you know. There's even a guy called Blind, um, the, the guy called uh, was Jabez. Mm. Jabez was a prophet. He did not have an encounter with Jesus Christ. He was not a miracle worker, but he came to himself. He said, ah, This cannot be life. If thou will bless me, as in bless me indeed, because he realized that this cannot be life. All right. Mm. So, how many people come to this understanding to discover their purpose, to discover their strengths and say, Hey, this cannot be. I cannot be playing on people's. Mm. Um, you know, default question or labels. It's about time that people begin to take the gauntlet and start to live the life God has proposed them for. Because at the end of the day, he's going to ask, oh, he's going to ask, how mm. did you use the talents? And, the, and, you know, we heard about the parable of the talents and of strengths. It, but it's not just in, in that light alone. It's that he has gifted and equipped us for a purpose, for an assignment, almost mm. like that all right, so the fish should be in water, almost like a monkey. The monkey should be, you know, almost like a lion, you know, because it's also in that same way. Adam was naming the script, uh, the, the creatures, the and this creatures. is who you are. So that's mm. also what has called. He says he knows every one of us by name. So he must have said, Ola to mm. Umo, Ola, 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 uh, Ola, 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 yes, this is this is you. He has mm. given you a name, all right. Just the same way Adam, in the first response, his first responsibility also in the University of Eden, he said, okay, this is tiger. This is cow. That's also how God has named us. And so he, we're not lameless. So God has a name yeah. for everyone. And that's the same way we he also has a purpose for everyone. Okay? So, but guess what? It's important that people start to live their life in tandem with God's truth. Now, I'm veering into something that if you've heard everything I've said before and you think is rubbish, let me tell you something. In, in, 1990, in 2019, all right, this now further, further confirmed this my journey. This further confirmed my journey even before the COVID journey. And I came in tandem with the scripture. It's hmm. called Isaiah 54. Hmm. Isaiah 54 and when that thing occurred to me, let me tell you how, you know, sometimes God speaks so that in case you want to know that God is speaking and whoever is here, I can tell you God still speaks. Absolutely. Um, so all through that day, before I went on another retreat, because I'm also a fan of retreats, before I went on another retreat, something happened. Um, at the, at the, the traffic light, I saw um, the light started to count from 54. Um, I, I got into uh, an office and, you know, just uh, beside the office, I saw number 54. By the time I got to the hotel, then, um, and I, it's also even on my Instagram, I took that date, that picture that day. And I was, before my retreat, I went to the up, upper terrace, and I was just relaxing, waiting for um, a drink. And just about that time, guess what I, guess I, what I they, they put a table, they put the table number for that day as number 54. Oh. I said, God, what is going on? This is too much of a coincidence. I started to look at my phone, started to Google, what does 54 mean? I went into a Google. Google took me to numerology, took me to the 54 this, the 55. I said, no, you can't, you cannot. This is more than this. Just when I had settled all and I couldn't even find a reason, it says, open Isaiah 54. Mm. And then I got into that script, Isaiah 54. It says, you know, Sing, you know, you barren. Now, barren in that state is that, are you infertile? Uh, do you have lack? Do you have a, a, a dare situation? Does it look unsolvable? Has the world written you off? Sing. He says what? Sing. And what does he say? He says, sing, O you barren. And then I took on that scripture. I transcribed the entire scripture, all right, to the extent that I've now written my own to the point wow. where now every day I'm I'm chewing. It, see, if he gives you a mandate, he says you will not come up short because there's also a scripture that says you have your God, your children have God as their mentor and their teacher. Yeah. So some things that I should bother about, I don't bother about. He says I will not come out short. 
So when you are going on an assignment also, and that's for those that have crossed the personal, have moved past profit, and are now on their purpose journey, you must now get illumination as to your critical assignment here on it. Because once you have that understanding, then you need to have a backing as to how, what is said, and why you need to move on that journey. And that's wow. why I'm moving with this so much gusto. I'm moving with this book. I don't care. Or, you know, it's almost like because <laughs> the guy that has given the assignment now uh, is able to do much more than I can do. And so he will fulfill it. You know, so we're doing startup summits. We're in Ghana. We, we had a successful startup summit in Ghana. We're off to Kenya. We said we want to cover Africa. And people are saying, oh, can this, can this, and that's what God is doing. And so you know what? that those that know their God, all right? It comes from the knowledge from the mm. of their God. Placed in the understanding of the scripture and knowledge of the word of God, they would do mighty exploits. So why are you not doing exploits? Have you found your purpose? You have your word. You have that instruction from the master himself. All right. Uh, all right. Sorry, I've taken over this and turned it into <laughs> a no, session. No. Honestly, this is this, a... This is just, I've just found my kind, honestly. This is my kind. I, I know I have some of my people here. They'll be like, mm -hmm. this is my kind, honestly. Flesh, flesh and blood. Yeah, yeah, so wow, my wow, wow. Please, please. I've, I've dropped Taiwo's handle there. So please, I did for you. Go and follow yes. Taiwo on Instagram. Great, Go and follow great, him. Great, great. great. Great post, yeah. honestly. And Taiwo, I'm still <laughs> coming to your book, Reinvention. I'm coming there. Taiwo mm. just released the book this year. Yes, and it's yes, coming. yes. We, we need to talk about it. We need yes, to talk about uh, it. Reinvention. Yeah. Reinvention. Amazing, amazing. Well done, Taiwo. And yeah. honestly, you have really spoken my heart. And um, I'm... Hey, Ruth said right on. <laughs> Honestly, I'm I'm enjoying the flow. I mean, I wish mm. this was beyond one hour, but I'm yeah. really enjoying it. And I know that a lot of our people who are here, they are getting value. So this is one hour well spent. It's not mm -hmm. just a waste of time <laughs> hanging around listening to some, <laughs> some words. But thank you so much for sharing all thank of that. You. Thank and you, thank sis. you for sharing from your heart as well. You really yes. share. I'm like, really hey, really where really do share. we, where, how are we going to collect offering now? Because this man <laughs> of God, <laughs> I've got this powerful <laughs> word. You must have to collect offering. <laughs> no, but this is Thank you so much. So you. now you told, you told us about the foundation for the yes. women. Yes. You're going to tell us a bit about that. And we have to be conscious of time now because yes. we, just 13 minutes. So you told us about the foundation and I want you to talk about the book. Yes. So okay. let's go for the foundation first. So what do you do with all of these women? And I don't know where you're going, because I read a post about your relationship with your wife. Mm. I don't know if that led to the foundation or if that was yeah. for the book. So yeah, exactly. I don't know why. Some of it is in the book. Okay, so, in the book. Yes. so maybe so, you so can that, chip that in somewhere. Okay, like you said so that I really just... read, I read your post. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So let me run now. Let me run. Okay, so for the foundation, you remember I told you about the personal retreat at the age of 38, and then I got into some trance and all of that, but I can't share the details here. But somewhere along the line, the the the, the vision and the mandate for phenomenal African woman was delivered about five months after. Because you know, sometimes also. You get, an, you get an insight. But if you don't settle down to get the interpretation of those insights, you just be running up and down. Yeah. So I was in Utopia. I went to some doing some things in Africa and, and across Kenya and all of that. Just because I thought, yes, this African mandate. But then God has not yet, you were you just doing uh, utter skeleton. But guess what? In the process, there was one day, I call it one of my truest moments, because everybody also needs to come to their truest moments. I sat down, mindful, and I said, okay, could the retreat have just been a treat? Was it just another exercise? Also settling back again to ask the question. You know, hmm. sometimes eh, we get illumination, but we don't ask for how it should be. You know, so the guy, almost like Noah, was building an ark. He kept asking for direction, okay? Hmm. Rather than also 
me asking for direction. When I get an insight, because my strengths, I, my top five strengths, I'm strategic, I have command, I have significance. I like to see things bigger than they are. I have um, deliberative and I also have what you call learner. So not, my natural disposition is that whenever you share an idea, I've seen the many other things that can happen. So when that vision came, I saw several other things, but I didn't see women. But when I came to my choice state, God spoke to me. He says, you know what? You are, you are going through a transformation now. And, you know, almost time a bit to this book. You are, you are going into a transformation now. You see, before now, you have disparaged women. Almost like, like, like some, you are now going to become a, a poor. All right? Almost like so, they are not going to become a poor. You have persecuted women. You have, you know, cajoled girls. You have uh, done un uh, abominable things to ladies, you know. You, it's now time. You have despised women. You have been a male chauvinist. Also, as a Yoruba royal boy, you know, you feel like, ah, I'm a you know. I, I, and, you know, maybe you guys might not understand what I'm talking about. So, first of all, I had a negative programming as how to interact with women. Now, I'm now a guy, ballet, you know, as in, I felt that, look, the only thing, like a king in the house, the only thing that the woman should be able to do is to comfort, to discuss and, uh, and accompany, you know, rather we could not have any meaningful discussion, except you were operating at the level at which my mom was operating at that point. But then I got cured because during that, my pro process or period of adversity, I soon realized that the house was able to run effortlessly for you know, about five to six months. I did not drop a dime, effortlessly. And who the woman was running, there was always food. Nobody knew except I told you. People were still sending me messages that we must pay school fees. And can I help them with uh, their children's this? Can yet I was going through uh, a crisis. Anyway, God helped us, and we set up Paul. Now, Paul, P A W, it means the the hand of a feline creature, like a lion, mm. and it says that in that. Poor women, if you despise women well enough, you will always see the club. So what, what has been the bane of Africa's development is that we have despised our women to the extent that all that we see are the clubs, all right? Rather, we should be seeing the poor. You know, there's also a Yoruba adage that uh, the, well, I can't really say it, but it's almost like that hand has the poor and the club. Now, P-A-W is the pop of a feline creature. And it says that for you to make footprints across Africa, we must now begin to ice, inspire, that's I, C, celebrate, and E, empower. And that was the old trick I used to use back then. If I caught or I was with a woman, I used the model then, is that by the time I start to inspire you uh, and ginger you, or by the time I start to celebrate you and serenade you, or by the time I start to empower you, hey, baby, take this. I already have I say, ah. The girl is already, you know, showing you a good side. So we turn this into a methodology, not for a, an evil purpose now, but purposely to also help bring out the poor, the phenomenal African women, to start to play their rightful, you know, play or to play their role rightfully in the community of nations. And we are focused on five thematic areas. Okay, so one is health because women have a lot of health issues. Two, entertainment. We try to educate people using entertainment. Uh, the three other levels, entrepreneurial leadership, development, empowerment, and then education. The girl child, attention, and all that. Okay, so that's Paul. There's the Paul uh, PAW Africa. You can follow them and then get more insights. www.pawafrica.com. Now back to this book. This book, yeah, was also after... A, and this book is a 21-day journey of radical transformation. You know, I told you I had lost all, even the will to live. Hmm. And it exposes the principles. And I started this discussion around methods and principles. And now you have principles for life, okay, for business and for love. Now, to a guy that for the first five years of my marriage, was marriage was hell. When I say hell, you people don't know hell. Do you understand what I'm saying? They, we, we, you, we, you people are very, you know, you people are, you don't know anything. The marriage was hell. Now we are 16, we are going 17. We have three lovely children, and it looks as if we were uh, Romeo and Juliet all at you. But I'm telling you, there must have been a transformation. It was an encounter, all right? 
This book espouses a radical transformation. <laughs> Principles and method. And that's what is espoused. Uh, and I won't talk much about that. If you are interested, you know, you, you are, if you are following, follow now, ask for the link now. Then we'll give it's a it's a stand. <laughs> it <was> stand. <laughs> if you want to ask you have, have e-copy, they have e-copy. There's e-copy on Amazon. You can also get okay. on Amazon. Uh, okay. Yeah. If you just Google reinvention. And we're starting the immersion class. So there's also a workbook. So that uh, if you need to be immersed, you know, and express this, because reinvention is a continuous journey. Absolutely. Like I said, it's a continuous journey, shining brighter and brighter. It's a continuum. It's a, you know, it's a never-ending circle until we get to the place where we are caught and we hmm. go back and say bye-bye, you know. And so... Wow. You know, I, I hope I've been able to just touch on every other wow, thing. Wow, this wow. one hour is almost looking like you gave me five minutes, but no problem. No problem. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. And Omolade has a question here. Maybe you yeah. just answered that. I said, okay. what advice do you have for startups to avoid burnout when the resources may not be available to outsource? Okay, so three questions in one. That's three questions in one. First of all, when you express burnout, it appears that that means that there's an overrun. It appears that that means that the engine is, is there are a lot of things that are deficient. It's that the things are not properly aligned. Okay, so I have a methodology. It's called AIM. All right, there must be alignment. There must be introduction of inputs or, you know, improvements. And then there must be monitoring and managing. So that's the AIM, which is now like a claim methodology. So, for instance, when there's misalignment, when you have the wrong things in the wrong engine, there will be burnout because you'll be overworking. So, is it that you are chasing the wind or you don't have clear defined um, KPIs, all right, or goals that you are pursuing? And once those goals are not clear, that means that you guys are constantly, you know, walking like an elephant, all right, or eat, walking like an elephant and eating like an ant. Is, is that the way they say it or something yeah. like that? Okay. Yeah. So the second thing in that question, it says that when resources may not be available to outsource, hey, let me tell you something. You see, there's what you call value chain. Now, therefore, if, for instance, you want to start, and I don't know, this business, this question is a bit broad. So if, for yeah. instance, you want to start a, a tire business, all right, or what, can you give me one, What just quickly tell me what business, you know, um, any Maybe. business. Maybe. A food, food case. So you want to cases. start a food business, okay? The first thing you are probably thinking of how to um, gather the ingredients and what have you. But can you even first start by understanding who the sell, who the buyers are? Then could you also find out where they sell good food, wow. okay? And then see a way you can be getting them to to cook and you go and deliver. Because you, all you first want to do the first purpose is to get people happy, right, and to have good food. Now, if you come into an arrangement like that, over time, you can also build capital. So I don't even know. now, And that works across every various levels, whether you are doing business, whether you are playing in the oil and gas sector. There's no sector you are playing with. Now, if you understand the value chain, you must determine your point of entry. And once you know your point of entry, once you are able to show credibility over time, and it's all about you know your content, your capacity, and your confidence, and your, even your character, you will be able to plug in and start off from wherever. So for me, I tell people, the capital you need is your head. The capital you need. So when you talk about uh, uh, that there's a, uh, resources are not available to outsource, I think that you also must start to think. Because when we don't think, we sing. When we don't sing, or we sing, or we think. So you must start to think, you know, thinking, thinking, thinking. And we could have a session there. Eh? Maybe this is not so complex as you are making it sound. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like what you said about, you know, you can get good food and get to the people. Mm -hmm. So you can, I, I think it's what is called OPM. You can use other people's money, other mm -hmm. people's uh, whatever. Whatever. Or, I just set yeah, it out. yeah mm -hmm. just set it out. So you don't mm -hmm. really need to do that yourself. And you can leverage on relationships as well. All right. Because there right. might be people around you who can offer that service. All you need to do is just to leverage. Thank you so much. Oh, I can't believe we just have one minute. So your last words before you go, we have just one minute. Your last words. My last words. <laughs> Play to your strength. And those, those, those are wow. words that are powerful. Play to your strength. 
play to your strengths. Hallelujah. Hey, did I say that? Play, I have to be me. I have to be me. Sorry. Play to your strengths. That's what Ty was left us with. Please go and follow Taiwo on his Instagram. He's Tease at the Poju at um on instagram and also subscribe before you go before you leave here try and subscribe to my channel next week i'm gonna bring somebody else and upper week i'll bring somebody else and bring somebody else you get inspired every sunday at 7 p.m except on the days i'm really tired and i'll let you know i'm human <laughs> <laughs> i'm human thank you so much everyone for joining us god bless you please share this video you can send this across to your friends and family just share it let someone get inspired just as you have thank you so much taiwo for coming i celebrate you thank you for all that you do we are gonna keep in touch i know we have many more things Ruth, Ruth is the director of our organization, the SS company. So I'm sure she will come to me and say, ah, that brother, what can we do with that brother? What can he do for us? So we'll get it. We'll definitely get in touch. God bless you, everyone, for joining us. And God bless you, Taiwo. So everyone, take care. Bye.